Hello, and welcome to the What's Up London show. I'm your host, Jennifer Slay. Before we start with our show, I want to acknowledge that I am currently in London, Ontario, which sits on the traditional lands of the Anishinaabek, Haudenosaunee, Lunapawak, and Shinantan peoples. I am very grateful and appreciative to the Indigenous peoples and their ancestors for being able to call this land my home. I also want to acknowledge my ancestors that came before me, allowing me the opportunity to be sitting here with you today. We have another feel-good show for you today. So let's get started. Collaborations are great, don't you think? When you have two great companies come together to make one amazing company, it's a win-win situation for everyone. The London Potters Guild and the London Clay Art Centre have consolidated into a brand new name, Clayworks. As a charitable arts organization, Clayworks offers exceptional education programs in ceramic arts for all ages, an open clay studio for artists and exciting community building. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. No problem. So tell us more about Clayworks. Well, I, I've found that most people are surprised at the scale and scope of what we offer. Mm -hmm. um, we have programs for all ages and all skill levels. We offer programming for uh, professional artists. Uh -huh. We act as a depot of sorts so uh -huh. that they can order things in, uh, specialty supplies, etc. Uh -huh. Yeah. And where are you located? We're in Old East Village, mm -hmm. very proudly working with the communities uh, that are there uh -huh. and the businesses, local businesses. Okay, and you said that it's a, a people would be surprised at the, at the, um, the, oh my word, <laughs> at how big the, the uh, facility is. Yeah, um, so we are actually a 7,000 square foot wow. facility, a commercial building uh -huh. in, right on Dundas Street uh -huh. uh, between Elizabeth and Adelaide. Uh -huh. We have uh, two floors. Mm -hmm. The first floor is actually um, for our 170-ish member artists, oh, and this okay. is where they share resources yeah. and spirit. Uh -huh. um, so, it's it's it serves it sorts it serves artists mm -hmm. in that they don't have to purchase everything for themselves or have their own space. Mm -hmm. And we find that. Um, the aspect of working together and with shared interests is also something that they value greatly. Mm -hmm. So that's the first floor. There's lots of services that we provide to them. Besides, I should mention, <laughs> there's um, glazes, shared tools. There's large equipment that they can also use, like mm -hmm. slab rollers. Mm -hmm. um, the second floor is where we have our public programs, our classrooms, our teaching classrooms, okay. and our office space, of course. Uh -huh. And so. Um, the public can like are there certain classes at certain times that people can come to to learn to do art or different levels of of that people can do that tell me more yes all to that all to that. um okay. so <laughs> we have we run multi class multi week classes uh -huh. um every night and most days 43 weeks out of the year oh wow on top of that we also have workshops uh -huh. that we run that are like 2 to 3 hours long so it's just you can come and just have a taste uh -huh. um and those can be anything from private bookings for like um, bridesmaid parties or birthday okay. parties or uh -huh. team building, or it can be just a family that wants to come and have some special time just for their family. Mm -hmm. We've got that as well. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. I had, I remember working with somebody one time and she said that she was doing pottery pottery lessons and things like that and so she mm -hmm. come and she was so proud of the, the work <laughs> that she did. It's not easy. You uh -huh. know, it requires a lot of time mm -hmm. and um, we also offer, I should mention, that uh, professional development training for youth and for emerging artists, mm -hmm. as, as well as we do skills workshops for more professional artists. Wow. So you do offer a lot. We try to, yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah. And so where can people go to find out more? Oh, well, we have a retail storefront, mm -hmm. so right on Dundas at 664 Dundas. Um, that's open right now Thursdays to Sundays, mm -hmm. reduced hours. We also have two annual or biannual uh, potter's markets mm -hmm. where people sell their wares. So we also have a website, okay. which is clayworks.ca. Um, and, but really, I mean, call us and we do tours. If someone just wants to come by and see what the space is like, mm -hmm. um, we will, you know, if we're available, anyone can come in and we'll give them a tour. Okay, 
Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so and, much. And for sharing this amazing um, s facility with all of us, because I, I think it's going to just blow up. I think I'd love to have you come by. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again. Thank you. We'll be right back. This program is brought to you by the following sponsors. Your happy place. Easy 1013, the perfect music mix. Carbon monoxide is a deadly gas you can't see, smell, or taste. Homes with fuel burning appliances and or attached garages must have working CO alarms installed outside all sleeping areas. Don't let the silent killer get you. Install working CO alarms today. And this one will escape the Niagara end. We have a counterattack the other way. Ooh, that's a pass right in front and a goal. Wow. And how quickly can defense turn into offense? Welcome back. In life, we experience certain hardships and certain pains at various times. And construction has been one of them in the city of London. And as London grows, construction has become a pain point for so many, for so many reasons. The inconvenience with traffic, the impact on businesses, and the list goes on. The beauty with a problem is that the solutions born from them can be so sweet. And the Argyle gift card BIA is one of those sweet solutions. It's a neat program that will bring an economic boost to the Argyle district and makes you feel good when you buy because you're supporting local businesses. Let's hear more about it. Welcome to the show. Hi, thanks Hi. for having us. No problem. <laughs> so tell us more about how this program came to be and, and what it is today. So actually, we had looked into these types of programs before, um, mm -hmm. even COVID actually. We had done a little bit of looking and um, they're all kind of pricey. So we were, you know, really taking our time on it, but it was something that we always wanted to kind of have happen for Argyle, but it was really pushed by COVID. And also we had some construction in the area that um, really kind of spurred us toward making that happen sooner rather than later. Um, and yeah, that's kind of what it came out of and it was really just a push in the right direction. Okay, and so what exactly is the program? Um, so, so, go ahead. <laughs> it's a gift card program essentially. So it's a way for you to support the local businesses in Argyle through a gift card. So when you buy this gift card for your grandma, your aunt, or whoever it is for, that money you know stays in Argyle. And it's a way to support the local businesses there. We're also looking at corporate sponsorships as well. Mm -hmm. So if you are yourself a business owner in the East London area, in the city in general, you can buy these gift cards for your employees for Christmas bonuses or whatever it is mm -hmm. and that's a way that you can ensure that your dollars are staying in the community as well mm -hmm. right. and so what kind of businesses are involved we have quite a quite a <laughs> quite an array honestly mm -hmm. um, so uh, this is a newer program so mm -hmm. we're still getting people on board mm -hmm. slowly but surely mm -hmm. um, but yeah we've got um, we've got a butcher on there we've got mm -hmm. um, uh, obviously, my head is going completely blank right of now. Course. <laughs> of course, <laughs> lots of <laughs> restaurants, lots of restaurants. Sorry, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, lots of restaurants. Yes. Um, we also went into Gibraltar's weekend market. Okay. Um, yeah, yes. we've got lots of them signed up as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, as many as you can. It's a it's a vegan 
sorry, visa um, card program. Okay. So you have to be able to take visa. Okay. And some of the smaller businesses don't take it, but mm -hmm. um, we are working on, you know, getting people set up with that and, and making it accessible to everybody. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's something we're working on and we've got a really, a really good group of people involved. Like I think it really mm -hmm. covers all the areas that you're yes. looking to uh, cover. Something for everyone. So if you purchase a gift card, you're gonna make everybody happy with it. I think so, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's awesome, that's awesome. And it's the Argyle, Argyle District? Yeah, so we are the Argyle Business Improvement Association. Mm -hmm. um, and we are, we're kind of hard to describe as an organization <laughs> a little bit, but basically um, we just, uh, give back to the community and try to support it ob mm -hmm. obviously economically support mm -hmm. the businesses but mm -hmm. also make it a um a community that people want to come to you mm -hmm. know um so yeah we just were like what is a great way to get argyle kind of seen a little bit and yeah. also have it specifically for argyle yeah. you know mm -hmm. and That's something we heard a lot from our community was we want to give back specifically to our businesses. So it's not mm -hmm. about just the businesses benefit, the community coming together and wanting that as well. They're Especially really, during construction, there was yeah. a lot of talk about that. Yeah, they're a really mm -hmm. supportive community. Like, uh, mm -hmm. I think not a lot. I think the East End kind of gets a certain one note kind of mm -hmm. image mm -hmm. and it's a lot more than that. The people who live there love living there mm -hmm. and they love, so, there's so much like customer loyalty in, mm. in that area. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's, it's, I think it's a really nice way to be able to also do giveaways and like reward people for supporting. The, the area mm -hmm. and you know the, the nice thing since COVID especially people don't necessarily have cash anymore yeah right That's and true. so they have this card and the beauty about this program is there's so much choice there is. right mm -hmm. there's not you're not mm -hmm. limited to just one type of place you can go almost anywhere in, in that area exactly yeah. that was actually um, something that was like for me specifically, I work with like the events uh, side of things, mm -hmm. and um, <laughs> when we were doing, we used to do, and we still do, but giveaways and contests and stuff. Mm -hmm. It was like, okay, so we got to put this gift basket together, and you have to, it, like, you would take days just like <laughs> going around getting all the gift cards from each business. Whereas like now, you can kind of go, okay, so like here's this gift card and you can go mm -hmm. to all these places and right. it's like up to you kind of thing. That's so That's awesome. Yeah. And you know, I can see other areas following suit. We mm -hmm. might have just started something here. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine with us. <laughs> yeah, that's fine with us. Yeah, we, they, um, yeah. sorry, the, the Downtown London also does it as well. Okay. Um, that's the Downtown Dollars program. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, yeah, it's just a matter of time before kind of everybody in the city yeah. has, has mm -hmm. their own, so. Well, thank you so much for being here and good mm -hmm. luck with the program. Thanks. Thank you so much. <laughs> we'll be right back. This program is brought to you by the following sponsors. London aims to reconstruct 80 lane kilometers of road, add or replace 20 kilometers of sanitary and storm sewers, rebuild 12 kilometers of water main, and construct 25 intersection improvements. About 16% of the people we talked to actually became homeless during the pandemic. And it's a horrible thing to be. Most people that are uh, have received treatment for drug use problems are probably going to have a lapse. Join addictions counselor Dean Anderson for Invisible, breaking through the stigma of addiction on Rogers TV. Watching Rogers TV. Welcome back. Have you ever tried Zumba? 
It's so great. Zumba is a fitness program that involves cardio and Latin-inspired dance. It was founded by Colombian dancer and choreographer Beto Perez in 2001. And our guest today is a Zumba instructor and is here to tell us about her classes as well as the parties that she hosts every three months. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. No problem. So tell us more about Zumba. So Zumba, like you said, it is a cardio workout. It is uh, uh, Spanish inspired, but we do play um, other music from different worlds, parts of the world. Mm -hmm. We do have some Afro beats, some Caribbean music, some soccer music. So it's a party all the time. Uh -huh. It is really is a party all the time. <laughs> I love Zumba because you're doing it and you're dancing, but you don't realize you're exercising. Just picture right. when you're cooking. When you're cooking, are you not dancing? Like you have your music on when you're cooking, right? And then sometimes you forget and you just start dancing, right? So this <laughs> is like, that, that's what that is. Uh -huh. Because you're sweating, you're having a great time, mm -hmm. you're smiling, mm -hmm. but you're, you know what, you're working out. Yeah. It's high intensity, low, high, low, and then you're just breaking the sweat. So tell us about your classes and your parties. So I have classes every Tuesdays and Thursdays, 7 to 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. um, I hold them at the French school, uh, saint jean -Dac. Um It's on 35 Fallons Lane. Okay. Um, you can find me on Facebook for mm -hmm. more information, Zumba Fitness with Dina. Um, and then every three months, um, other Zoom instructors and I, I have two friends who are also instructors. Uh -huh. So we do hold two hour Zumba parties and they are themed. Um, so we had one for St. Patrick's Day. Uh, we have one for Mother's Day uh -huh. and it's Hawaiian themed. Uh -huh. um, and then we'll probably plan more for the Halloween and then usually for Christmas. Nice. So. That sounds okay. fun. You should come. Oh, I should. I really should. Because <laughs> I, I love Zumba. Yes, yeah, really you should really should. It's fun. So what are some common moves? So the most common moves, you have merengue, ah. you have salsa, you have reggaeton, which is usually everybody's favorite. Uh -huh. You have um, calypso. Um, now we have added Afro beats. Mm -hmm. So it's honestly, the moves are not that hard to do. Mm -hmm. um, you just haven't have a good time. Right. So the instru as instructors, obviously we do the choreography and then you make it so that everybody has a good time mm -hmm. and it's moves that everybody can do. Well, right? that's what I was gonna ask you yeah. because people who say, well, I have two left feet, I can't dance, I can't do all of that. It's really not no. that difficult. It is not a dance class. Like mm -hmm. it's not, you're not coming in for me to, to critique if you have two feet or <laughs> right feet or not. I usually tell my students, I'm like, if I go left and you go right, I go up, you go down, you're still moving. Okay. If Spanish music is playing, mm -hmm. but you hear rock and roll, I'm not gonna be mad at you if you're just, you know, <laughs> doing rock and roll on this side. <laughs> as long as you're doing something and you're not uh -huh. standing, mm -hmm. you're fine. Mm -hmm. So just come and try it. Yeah. Even if it's just the one time, people always say, oh, but I'm not really coordinated and I didn't think I can dance. I'm like, no, just come, come listen to the music. You know, yeah. we're not there to judge you, how you move. You're just there for the, to the dance, for their mm -hmm. fitness, but also for the social aspect of it, yeah, right? Like yeah. you just get to meet a really amazing people yeah. doing it. Yeah. I equate Zumba with fun. Like yes. Just, like yes. the music just makes you feel good. Right? Right? Like if, you know, I could be like, okay, we're doing the assassin move, but you know, you want to go down? I'm okay with that. You know, <laughs> you just go do you over there. I'm fine with that, right? Mm -hmm. It's fun. It's exercise. And, and it's just, you're not feeling, because you, you know, when you're running on treadmill, I can't remember the, the last time I ran on treadmill and I was like, oh my God, this is great. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Right? But when you're doing Zumba, that's what the, that is, the, that's those are the feelings that you get. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, this is fun. You're mm -hmm. smiling, right? Mm -hmm. I get all of a sudden 60 minutes is yeah. nothing. And so there's 60 minute classes. Yeah, they're one hour classes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And it's Tuesdays and Thursdays. Tuesdays and Thursdays. At Saint Jean d'Arc. Saint, Saint Jean d'Arc. I okay. expect to see you there at some point. <laughs> <laughs> you will. You will. And is there a cost associated with it? Yes. Oh, so a drop in ten dollar to ten dollar uh -huh. class for dropping in. Okay. Um, so we need, and they, if you uh, make a commitment to come um, every Tuesday and Thursday, mm -hmm. and then it's sixty dollars a month. Okay. So that way it's cheaper if right, you right, make right. the commitment. So mm -hmm. we're we're also trying to get people to get committed to come all the mm -hmm. time because it is a fitness. 
right? It's yeah. a fitness that you want to do and incorporate into your everyday life, yeah. even though it's fun. It's awesome. Fun. So, well, it, well, you yourself seem fun and <laughs> joyous and I full am. of joy, and so then. The Zumba, you just add it, it's going to be a great time. That's right, add the music and got me and then you, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will be there. Okay, I, that I, I hold you there. to that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for Thank being you. here. Thank you for having me. No problem. <laughs> we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Dan Mailer. I'm the host of London Lights the show where we talk about notable Londoners who have made a big mark, big impact on the world of music, entertainment, sports, politics. I'm a community producer. I love all things nature and conservation, so that's kind of what I put into the show. When I started making my videos for um, my job, I didn't think that they were definitely TV caliber, but you know, now that I see it in action, I'm definitely happy that I took the chance and I worked with uh, Scott, a producer at Rogers, and I think it's definitely worth it to take a chance and to ask and see what your project could become. Uh, have fun with it. Um, you know, you don't have to be perfect. I think I'm a pretty good example of that. You know, reach out to people get, if you're going to do kind of like an interview thing. Um, but yeah, just have fun. Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Mario Elia, and I'm the host of a new show here on Rogers TV that we're calling Keeping London Healthy with Dr. Mario. So tune in Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. and we'll see you then. Welcome back. As many of you know, Rogers TV hosts a number of local community television shows. One of those shows is called Jack Up the Heat. And what is that, you might ask? Well, Jack eats hot things. And he's here today to share more about his show and also tell us about the pepper eating world belt match that he has coming up in New Zealand the end of this month. Welcome to the show. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Good. So you are in the Guinness Book of World Records. I am, yeah. Yes, and there's a picture of you in here. And there we go. tell us about this. So, uh, yeah, they, they picked a, a nice picture of me there, and then they picked a picture where I'm not really looking so great after eating some uh, peppers. <laughs> but yeah, I've, uh, I've broken 10 different Guinness World Records. Uh -huh. um, that one is for uh, uh, most ghost peppers eaten in two minutes. Um, my craziest one that I've done so far is uh, most uh, Carolina Reaper peppers, eat, uh, or sorry, fastest time to eat 50 Carolina Reaper peppers, uh, which I just broke in uh, November, so. How many did you eat? I ate, I ate 50, it was fastest time to eat 50, yeah, uh -huh. so. Okay. Oh, I actually, yeah, I, actually I was telling you before, um, uh -huh. I, uh, after I was done the 50, I kept eating just to see how many I could do, and I ate uh, 135, which is the, it's actually the second most anybody's ever eaten in one sitting. Wow, okay, and so you were telling me that there is a, a, way, a, a way of thinking so yeah. that you're able to do this. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, it's a lot of uh, just mind over matter and uh -huh. stuff like that. Uh, the peppers, you know, it's kind of a, a wise tale or whatever that it's, um, you know, the peppers uh, actually burn you or hurt you or stuff uh -huh. like that. Um, well, because I thought you'd get a hole in your stomach. I thought you'd get an ulcer from it. No, if if anybody was going to get an ulcer, I would have one like <laughs> long ago. But yeah, my doctor knows. He's got a book in his office and everything. Uh -huh. that, so I, I signed a book for him. But uh, yeah, no, it's just uh, it's just all in your head. It's just. Uh -huh. uh, you know, it's kind of like a defense mechanism for the for the plant. It doesn't want uh, uh, you know mammals to eat it. Uh, mm -hmm. Birds uh, mm -hmm. they can actually eat pep eat the peppers. It doesn't burn them or anything. They mm -hmm. don't they don't feel anything. Mm -hmm. um, people think it's like a way uh, for the the seeds to spread when the uh, the birds eat them and then they they poop them out around mm -hmm. around. So uh, you know, help the okay. uh, spread the plants. I right, guess. Right, so, right. Yeah. And tell us about your belt. So I got this belt here. I'm the uh, the reigning uh, two-time American chili pepper eating champion. So, <laughs> congratulations! Proud of that. And I'm uh, I'm going for a uh, 
yeah, I'm going for the, the world belt uh, mm -hmm. of chili pepper eating in New Zealand on uh, May 27th. I'm pretty excited about that. Oh. Uh, I've, I've wanted to go to New Zealand for a long time and it's a great opportunity for uh -huh. me to go and mm -hmm. uh, compete for the, the world belt. To be the best in the world, that would be amazing. Wow, well, good luck with that. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your show. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, Jack Up the Heat on Rogers TV. Uh, I go to local London restaurants and uh, I challenge them to make me the world's hottest foods. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so you bring your, your television crew or you take pictures or what happens? How does it all work? How can a restaurant get involved? Yeah, we like um, we go to the restaurants and uh, you know we talk to them beforehand so they they know what they're mm -hmm. going to make and stuff and mm -hmm. uh, yeah I, I bring a I bring a guest with me too because uh, sometimes you know like if it's really spicy I'll be eating it and I might not react so much but then you can see like what a kind of a normal person <laughs> I guess like what their reaction would be so uh -huh. a lot of uh, a lot of funny stuff happens there and yeah we've done lots of uh, lots of crazy things lots of things you'd expect like you know uh, world's hottest tacos and uh, world's hottest pizza but we've also done crazy stuff too like we did a uh, world's hottest donuts world's hottest oh. ice cream so ice cream ice cream yeah it's pretty crazy because it's like you know you get the cold from the ice cream and uh -huh. then the heat from the from the peppers and the you know the hot sauce we uh -huh. put on so uh -huh. yeah it's kind of it's kind of weird it's like hot and cold at the same time <laughs> so I was saying to you before that one time I accidentally ate a pepper that must have burst in the food I was at at a, a restaurant and my eyes just started to water and my mouth was on fire yeah right and I know you said it's mind over matter however how can somebody what can somebody do to kind of help ease the heat I guess the only thing that really helps is uh is is dairy like if people are drinking mm -hmm. milk or ice cream stuff like uh -huh, that uh -huh. um to be honest I'm, I'm actually vegan so i don't do any dairy so uh the only real way for me to get rid of the heat is just time you just wait you just wait it out and then it'll stop burning so i'd say in your in your mouth like the most it's gonna burn is like maybe like at the most like 15 20 minutes or so and then uh you know, depending on how much spicy stuff you eat, the you know what I got to worry about is like your your guts after. That's uh -huh. like that's the tough part. But okay, well that's awesome. Well, good luck. I hope that you break more records. Thank you. And that you're able to keep your mind over matter thing because I don't know how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for being here. Oh, thanks for having me. And that's a wrap. I want to thank all of our guests for being here today, and thank you for watching. Please go and visit our guests' social media pages and or attend their events. I encourage you to consider supporting their businesses to show your support. And at the very least, like, comment, and share this episode with your networks to get the word out. Again, thank you for being here. Take care, be well, and I'll see you next week. the Rogers TV viewer response line. Email us or connect with us on social media. Monday. Holidating Purpose is a new show all about supporting organizations seeking to have so right, social impact no, in the work that they do. Structure. Whether nonprofit, for profit, or social enterprise uh, grassroots organization, you'll learn key considerations to starting or growing your social purpose business in a long term and sustainable way. Pollinating Purpose on Rogers TV.